our Impacting Life 24-7 sponsors have helped us go where no podcast has gone before. Platinum sponsors. Poor Katrina McCain is the author of Because She Decided to Love. This book is a collection of poetry and prose about love and its important impact on every relationship. This raw and uncut poetry book addresses the themes of how we experience love through loss, hurt, pain, grief, and passion. Connect with her and get your copy of this book at poorkatrinamccain.com. Donald Skip Mondragon, MD, is a 26-year Army veteran, National Veterans Wrestling Champion, and speaker. He is the author of Wrestling Depression is Not for Wimps, Lessons Learned from an Amateur Wrestler's Fight to Triumph Over Depression. Contact him at wrestlingisnotforwimps.com. The Underdog Ninja Foundation. This was founded in 2020 by Javi and Jessica Madrigal, a husband and wife team that have been battling and overcoming heart disease for over 18 years. Their personal story and experiences have led them to follow their calling of empowering, educating, and supporting those fighting heart disease. Contact this amazing team at underdogninja.com. Melinda Tyson Linder. She has spent decades investing in people from all different walks of life. She has led inner city programs for disadvantaged youth, as well as been a mentor to young adults, married couples, and individuals facing adversity. Belinda and her husband have built multiple six and seven figure businesses and have trained leaders on having tenacity and character in business. Ultimately, Belinda cares about people and shows the love of God to everyone she encounters. Bettina Carey. Bettina Carey is the diminutive four foot nine and a half Latina. She inspires and empowers women to create big results. They break through. No, they shatter their earnings glass ceilings. They kick self-imposed limitations to the curb and live their legacies now. Whether she's coaching from a live or virtual stage or conferring with a small core hold of bold women and men on the rise at a conference table, her championship strategies say you can win today. Contact her at weempoweryourlife.com. If you would like to become a sponsor of Impacting Life 24-7, reach out to clkingspeaker.com. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Reach out to clkingspeaker.com. I'm hoping that everyone out in Impactville can hear me. This is your host, CL King, coming to you from the High Definition Studios here in Impactville. And I'm sitting in the Ruth E. Plowden Legacy Chair. So if you can hear me, touch your nose. If you can hear, <laughs> that's what they do in kindergarten. Uh, I just want to thank you for being a part of what we're doing. Have been away for some time because of the transition that our young son went through, going through boot camp, army boot camp, and making it to the army band. Now we got him all settled in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So that's where we were at, not in Colorado, but we were helping getting him off, up, uh, flew out of Norfolk this past weekend. And so that particular area, that particular element, that phase reg regrettably is done. Now, you know, the parents don't, Parents don't necessarily admit it all the time, but we we prepare our kids to leave and then we really don't want them to go. And so that's what that was about. And so I'm thankful that he is serving our country as well as serving in a capacity that is his absolute life passion. And that is to play drums 24 seven, because that's what he did here. And so thank you, Greg, the VP for always being with me. And we are, you know, we had to dust everything off in here because we really have been out of the studio. Uh, and we're, we're going to have a breakneck speed schedule over the next several months as we get ready for the release of Who Ate My Brownie, the book that I'm writing, which is a life story, but also a book filled with life results and uh, how you can overcome 
life's adversarial darts that it, that it throws at you, no matter the adversity, you still can make it. And so that's scheduled for release the 24th of July, 2022. And also you can be a part of that. Just go to clkingspeaker.com. If you would like to just kind of follow along with what we're doing here, subscribe to our podcast. You can go to clkingspeaker.com or you can go to anywhere where you get your podcasts and download them. Subscribe and let people know what you think about the show. You can go to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, all of those places. Now, I'm looking at my live audience and I didn't realize that I didn't change from our staff meeting today. We had a staff meeting before I went on the air and I didn't realize that I'm wearing totally like 17 different colors. Only thing that matches my background is the hat. I threw this jersey on in our staff meeting to really poke at Greg because he is, you know, that's the beautiful thing about working together with him for all these years. We couldn't be more opposite and yet we get so much done together. What a blessing he is. And so he is a Duke fan. And of course I keep him on staff just for that reason. And so I, in our staff meeting today, I went and uh, threw all my North Carolina Jersey just to, just to mess with him a tad bit. There was some, uh, some, college basketball stuff going on up in Norfolk when we were up there. And so Greg says, go Duke. And I say, "Mm -hmm. (laughs) we're in the playoffs. We're in, we're in the next bracket. We'll see how long that lasts. So again, how, how cool is it to have someone that you work with on such an important mission and y'all are different on almost all topics, but that's what really makes us so close. Our differences is really, really what brings us together and back when greg could play basketball he would he had a mean little left hand jumper is it it, greg's greg had the left hand jumper so yeah he would fool you go and right and come back with that left hand so great man great man of god and just an absolute my absolute best friend greg smith also while we're while you may have heard those of you listening to our podcast all throughout the country and around the world those people that you heard on that commercial are our sponsors and our sponsors really help us and have helped us transition this show from just a quick little hobby, something that we're doing kind of, you know, like in the basement somewhere to something that really is a, a valuable resource, a valuable resource in, in every community. Um, every night on Impacting Life 24-7 when we have a show, you're going to get access to the cathedral of resources that we have here. This is literally the cathedral of resources. And every night it's something different, whether it be physical health, mental health, people that are wrongly incarcerated, people overcoming crazy odds, you know, a paraplegic, quadriplegics, just every, every type of story of overcoming adversity has been on this show. We got something in the works coming up where we're going to get uh, Sheriff uh, Chip Hughes as well as Greg Singleton back on. And we're going to have them together because I want to highlight the work that these gentlemen are doing in the community there in Craven County and the work that they're doing relative to re-entry, you know, from prison. It's one thing to, to, to keep them locked up. And as I was talking to Chip, um cues at the black history parade last month he told me he said he doesn't want them to be comfortable in his prison and i said that makes so much sense he doesn't want them to want that to be their 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 final destination and so he has partnered with um greg singleton at craven community college on a workforce re-entry program that is absolutely phenomenal and so uh, uh greg I, I think uh in april we'll get them on and just talk about you know because april signifies and represents so much newness <clears throat> so much life so much hope and promise these two gentlemen are doing really powerful things in the community helping to reduce recidivism and lowering the prison population now i know for chip being the sheriff I know for Chip being the sheriff of Craven County, 
you know, that that's kind of like he's working himself out of a job. But you can tell where his heart is. His heart is getting these these offenders who some of them just made a mistake, got, you know, got twisted up in the wrong elements of life, getting them back on the right course. And when when I can hear a sheriff, you know, who's partnering with the community college saying, hey, man, we're doing everything we can to get these people back reemployed, getting them back effective in society, uh, making it so they don't they don't come back here. We need to promote that. We need to celebrate that, ladies and gentlemen. We need to we need to be thankful that people like that are, like I said, in our community and who are really taking the bull by the horns and saying, yes, we understand that there are offenders. And yes, people have, you know, done some things to get them in here. But we're going to work together. We're going to work aggressively to get them out of here. And more importantly, make it so they don't come back. Give them the tools to succeed. See, it's one thing to just say, uh, yeah, you, you know, here you go. Here's your, here's your $47 for, for your wages while you were here. Uh, go out and sin no more. But it's another thing when you can truly give them a framework, a landscape, then that's what Greg and Sheriff Chip Hughes are working on. Um, that they're actually actually executing this, that, you know, pr- creating a, a landscape of hope and promise as opposed to, well, just figure it out on your own, man, ho- helping these guys and, and young ladies truly uh, overcome their, their adversity. And that's what it's about, man. That's what it's about on this show. That's why we do this show, because we want to talk about the impact that happens in life. We want to talk about the real impact. We want to talk about the impact that shakes your soul, ladies and gentlemen. And so again, impacting life 24 seven with your host CL King. We have a, I'm just going to let you know about this and then I will move on to tonight's topic. We are doing a starting at the end of the month in March, we're rolling out a opportunity for people to partner with us more on a real concrete basis because you know people just come in they kind of hang out in the shadows you know i'll see people out in town who i never see you know i never we never see comments or anything by them and they say oh man your show is awesome and i'm just like wow i didn't even know you were watching and so the the show is growing the show has grown tremendously since since we started <laughs> with the with the I don't know what it was the Beverly Hillbillies uh, approach to podcasting but now we 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 continue to improve our equipment we continue to expand our resources we continue to shore up our infrastructure as a as a as a legitimate source for people to for people to glean great information from we're not going to come on here and and rant every night about, you know, all the divisions that are going on in the world. We will deal with issues that affect our world, but we are looking to bring people together. We are not looking to, to tear people apart. And so with that, you know, you get some amazing world renowned people. We have people from Australia and Canada and Brazil and Venezuela and all over the world have been hosts, have been guests on our show. And then the listenership is in over 30 countries around the world. And so to do that, we got to continue to grow and growth requires continued process improvement. And so our staff meets a couple times a month to look at how the show is going. I show them the analytics. We, we look at what's happening. And so at the end of the month, we're going to give you an opportunity to, to connect with us. And if you'd like to become a sponsor, we're going to do a sponsorship drive. Uh, literally for a couple weeks and just show people kind of like what it takes to to have impact in life 24 7 what it means to the community and why it's a i feel it's an irreplaceable resource at at the end of the month also we're, we're hosting something for young people absolutely free that is a result of our sponsors help and that is our gear training we give this gear training to students absolutely free. We give this for free and we got some giveaways 
um, that, that will be a part of the sponsorship drive. But we're, we, we give this training, it's called gear for young people who feel stuck in life, who feel like they just, on the 26th of March at one o'clock, we're, give, we're giving this away to any student, sixth grade through 11th grade. And I being a five disciplined life coach, the least of which is a master life coach, I'm going to teach them four steps to unlocking what's already inside of them and help them get in gear. You know, a key and a lock is almost symbolic of a gear. You know, when it, when it fits, it works. And when it doesn't, you don't have access. And so the 26 is, is uh, coming up shortly here. And that's a result of people who have helped sponsor this show and help sponsor our tentacles of impact that traverse throughout the corridors of the world. And it really gives us, it really gives us another way to be givers instead of takers. You know, I, I, I feel the weight of that oftentimes when Greg and I bring people on the show. It is truly about giving and it's better to give than to receive. Free training at one o'clock PM Eastern standard time live. And if you would like to sign up for it and you don't know how, if you don't go to my Facebook page, you can go to clkingspeaker.com and click on the gear training. There's a way for you to sign up already on there. All the details are there. clkingspeaker.com tonight. Since I'm talking this, I just segued. This will be a great segue. I mean, into talking about what we want to discuss and that's young people. Young people, our youth, and what is happening with our young people in America? What's happening with youth in America? I bring up topics that are close to my heart because, as you guys know, being a youth advocate and being, oops, I didn't flip the sign around, guys. I'm supposed to, this is not the Impact Motivator show. This is, I'm supposed to turn them. Turn the sign around because <laughs> this is Impact Life 24-7. I forgot to do that. I'll have it done by tomorrow night, so I apologize. But, you know, talking to young people and hearing their stories throughout the country and being able to, to help them and encourage them with my story is something that has been the legacy of what we are trying to do here. You know, Greg being 11 years he served in the young Marines, volunteered as a, as a company commander. And he took those kids to Paris Island trips and all different types of things, getting them ready, giving them an option, an outlet for preparation for real life if they wanted to actually pursue a career in the military service. And the work that Greg and I did with the, with the young Marines, his was far more illustrious than mine. But it was noted in the, the International Young Marines magazine, a spree, uh, three different times. We got in that magazine three years for encouraging and helping um, the young Marine programs throughout Eastern Carolina, helping them with bullying, helping them with leadership. And so young people are at the heart. They're, they're at the heart of C.L. King. They're at the heart of what I do. But our nation is... You know, you would think that, you know, we're coming out of one thing and it's, but there's really, there are things that are happening that we need to take note of and be aware of. Mom and dad, I need you to be aware. of. And if you happen to catch this show live or on the replay, I would ask for you to share this episode because it's important, especially if you got kids. The nation's drug related overdose and death epidemic, ladies and gentlemen, it continues to worsen. The nation's drug epidemic and overdose crisis and death, it continues to worsen. An article in the American Association Medical, the American Medical Association says this on February. The nation's drug overdose epidemic continues to change and become worse. One prevailing theme is the fact that the epidemic is now 
driven by illicit fentanyl, fentanyl analogs, methamphetamines, cocaine, often in combination or in adulterated forms. Okay, this, this, I'm just, I want to educate you all tonight on Impacting Life 24-7. There is an urgent need for policymakers and those that are in leadership to take action, to increase interventions to take this war on drugs really to the street. People are dying. Local state health agencies are reeling because they, they don't have enough infrastructure and enough support. And we're left to try to figure it out like, okay, so, you know, I just go out there and start up my car in the morning and I go off to work and I drop little Johnny off at school is, is what's the problem. Let me tell you something. Teenage fentanyl, ladies and gentlemen, those deaths of teenage fentanyl are soaring. And for, for we just celebrated Black History Month last month. Black teens are being hit the hardest in this arena. Did y'all know that? This is what we do here on Impacting Life 24-7, ladies and gentlemen. We try to bring to you in this cathedral of resources things that you can do to take from here and truly make an impact. When's the last time, mom and dad, just, let's just, let's just con converse here. Okay. When's the last time you have sat down with your kids and talked about drug use? I'm preaching to the choir. I'm talking to myself too, because I still got a 17 year old out of, he's the last of the seven Mohegans. And when we when we say that there's their deaths are soaring and we're saying that that people are kids are dying and we're saying that it's becoming an issue in particular in the fentanyl category where 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 do we start in my opinion it always starts at home and doctors are seeing victims as young as 14 ladies and gentlemen 14 years old in the emergency room because a fentanyl overdose. You know, a, a, another medical article on February 11th said overdose deaths linked to synthetic opioids like fentanyl tripled among teenagers and went up five times among black teens in the past two years. According to the provisional data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, which we get, we've gotten all of our, you know, our pandemic information from, listen to them. The nonprofit group Families Against Fentanyl com, uh, compiled the data from the CDC, which said 2021 figures are incomplete because drug overdose deaths have a six month lag time in reporting time. Margaret Warner from the CDC's National Center for Health Statistics said, given the spike in drug use during the pandemic, it's likely 2021 deaths counts will rise sharply. Now, listen, listen to this, okay? Opioid use has gripped our nation, the United States, for two decades, and synthetic opioids like fentanyl are the driving force behind overdose deaths. Over the past few years, listen, teenagers, especially black teens, are being especially hit hard. Why? So we state a problem, and so what's the why? What, what is happening here? There was a hearing uh, at the Senate Finance Committee on Youth Mental Health during the pandemic. Idaho Republican Mike Crapo remarked that there has been a staggering rise in teenage overdose deaths. Uh, Ronit Lev, an emergency room physician at Script Mercy Hospital in San Diego, California, said that the provisional data confirms what she's been seeing. Most, if not all the cases she's seen are accidental overdoses. Recently saw a 14-year-old die from fentanyl. And we don't think the home matters. 
There are five, ladies and gentlemen, there are five pillars, five touch points that Greg and I have tried to work with for the past, goodness, it's going on quite some time now, Greg. The home, school, the community, faith-based organizations, and the individual child. That's what, those are the five areas that we feel like we can impact. When we go out on the road, it'll be a church, a community center, a school, a boys and girls club, wherever. And the article goes on to say that the problem is both supply and demand. There's already a lot of fentanyl coming into our market, and now we have an, a greater increase in problem because the supply and demand is out of control. You know, supply and demand, that's like, that's like a real thing. See, look, here's what she says. There's already a lot of fentanyl coming into our market, and now we have a pandemic where people are finding themselves stuck in the house. Are they not? Is that, is that not a contributing factor? We're finding people that are stuck in the house. They're, they're being isolated. And the reality is, is that these, these young people are facing a sub-pandemic within the pandemic. Now, I, I don't know about, uh, about you, but I do know this, that when I hear that we've got a supply and demand issue for drug use in this country, that makes me want to take note that makes me want to take note to what's going on. Here's, 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 here's what else they said in terms of supply and demand. There's already a lot of fentanyl in coming into the market, and now we have a pandemic. Of course, they had the pandemic. We've been dealing with that for 24 months where people are isolated and not working, they're not, and they're not in school. You know, that, that was an issue there. These teenagers probably don't have a substance use disorder. They're experimenting making a bad choice, and they end up dead. Just from experimentation, ladies and gentlemen, just fentanyl is, is sweeping our country, and our young people are experimenting with it, and they're winding up in the grave. Listen, fentanyl is 100 times more potent than morphine and 50 times stronger than heroin. Listen to those numbers again. Fentanyl which is in great supply. It's saturating the market. It is 100 times more potent than morphine and 50 times stronger than heroin. It's becoming increasingly common for fentanyl to be added to other drugs, cutting costs and making them more addictive and more dangerous. Users often don't know their drugs contain fentanyl. So your young person wants to experiment with, with drugs and to, to get them hooked, the drug dealers now are, are injecting them and lacing them with fentanyl. <clears throat> Listen to me. According to the CDC, fatal overdoses involving synthetic opioids like fentanyl increased nearly sixfold from 2015 to 2020. Sixfold death increase or overdoses. That number is expected to be even higher in the years to come, with a huge number of deaths resulting from fentanyl overdoses, according to the Center for Disease Control, Center of Disease Control. The risk with fentanyl isn't just addiction or other side effects. The risk with fentanyl, ladies and gentlemen, is death. It's simply death, said Michael Barnett, a professor at Harvard T.H. Chan School for Public Health. It's not just, it's not just the risk of addiction. Like, man, you're just going to smoke your little weed, get your little joint. 
No, 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 no. It's not just the risk of addiction, like being pooky on New Jack City and smoking crack. No, the 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 risk is now the first time experimentation could lead to death. And so what I'm calling on moms and dads to do this week is sit down and have a conversation with your kid. Just just have a conversation. Sit down and have a conversation with your kid about how powerful and how deadly this drug is. Let me tell you, I in 2013 had a gun a gargantuan size hole form on my leg. Okay. It was called a Venus Stacy's ulcer. And that ulcer grew in size and measure. <laughs> and it became very, very painful. Went to several doctors and finally realized, man, it, it was getting so bad. It, it was, my leg was hot. It was, boy, we was on the, we was on the edge of, of losing this thing. Got to the ER. They uh, had to perform an emergency surgery. And then for like the next year, I was on, I was in pain management and was taken care of at the wound clinic, the size of the hole in my leg. For those of you can see, man, it might've been four inches in diameter and five inches in length. It was, it was, it was dramatic. It was a dynamic hole. They had to burr out all of this toxic stuff. And every day I had to pack that thing with these, with these special types of gauze. And you talk about all your nerves <clears throat> are firing when you got to pull that thing out. Ooh, Jesus. It makes me cringe just thinking about it now. Well, from 2013 to about 2015, guess who was on legal doctor prescribed opioids? That's right. C.L. King. And then in 2016, <clears throat> thinking that I was <laughs> a young kid still, I went to a trampoline park and landed wrong and damaged my back. So I had to have a hernia repair surgery. So after the surgery, guess who was on legal prescribed opioids? Oxycodone. Guess who was? That's right. Yours truly. And they said, oh, this should heal up for you in about four or five weeks. Four or five weeks went by and it got worse. So they said, oh, man, we, we didn't realize that you've got some serious issues going there. We got to take a disc out. We got to put some hardware in. We, we got to hook you up. Half a million dollars in surgeries. 2017 still wasn't any better. Guess who was still on? Doctor prescribed opioids. Guess who? Yes, me, yours truly. And then <clears throat> after it, the repair did not work and the new hardware did not work and it was still painful. I, my, my left leg still has numbness to this day. The doctor said, the surgeon said, you're going to be on pain management probably for the rest of your life. I'm going to set you up with a pain management doctor. You'll go see them once a month. <clears throat> They'll renew your month supply of oxycodone and gabapentin. And I wish you the best. So for the next two and a half years, <coughs> sorry, ladies and gentlemen, for the next two and a half years, I, C.L. King, the impact motivator, was on legally prescribed, doctor-supervised opioids. And if you sitting out there who may be listening on our podcast or who may watch this at a later broadcast or who may sneak in and don't say nothing during the live, if you think that I'm so strong and mighty and powerful to overcome the addictive properties in opioids, you crazy. It was not just an addiction, it was a dependence. Like, 
That's the first thing you think of in the morning. The last thing you think of at night. Because you take four or five pills a day. And the moment that you take the pill earlier than what your prescribed dosage is, the less your body sends tolerance for pain. You're thinking that you're in more pain. You're thinking that you're in pain more often. And the reality is you're just shrinking your tolerance to pain. And I went on with this for till 2018, 2019. I missed, I missed so much stuff. It, 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 those things put you in a fog, a, a physical brain fog where you don't know what's going on in life. And, uh, I said, I'm going to buy me a pill cutter. Good friend of mine, John Yop, who's running for sheriff of Onslow County, he's, he had the same surgery. He said, I had the same problem. Had the same issue with this medication, with these opioids. And I was on them just like you are. The only way I got off of them was to start exercising. So I listened to him. I bought a pill cutter, started exercising, started cutting the dosages in half. And then cutting those in half. And then I walked myself down off of pain management. My pain management doctor, who I would go see every month, said I was her first and only patient to get off pain management. Opioids are powerful. And if you don't sit down and have a conversation with your kid, <clears throat> Listen, run them to soccer, run them to dance, run them to track and field. Do all that. Cheer for them at baseball. Scream and holler at basketball. But sit down with them and have a conversation with your child. I just told you, didn't make it up, wasn't stretching it. Fentanyl is 100 times more potent and morphine. They give me morphine for major surgeries. And it's a hundred times more potent than that. And 50 times stronger than heroin. And we got heroin addicts all over the place. So there have been studies that have been published about fentanyl. But there have been few, few, few. We got people dying, got emergency rooms piling up, but we don't have a lot of studies going on with, with, with fentanyl or the overdose deaths. Focus specifically on black teenagers. So there, we, we, got it, we looked at this, and, and this jumped out at me at this, in this article because <clears throat> there's trends in the black community that we need to be aware of. Greg, we need, we need to tell them, we need to tell our, our supporters in the black community and be very gentle and compassionate, but there is a problem and the rates and the information and the numbers are higher in the black community. So look, as recently as 2015, Black men were less likely to die from drug overdose than white or indigenous men. Since then, the death rate among black men has more than tripled, according to the Pew Research Center. The rate at which overdose deaths have increased among black men far outpaces any other racial group. <clears throat> this same story that plays out for almost every other major health disparity that emerges between racial communities, Harvard Barnett said, and COVID-19 has kind of blown it apart and just magnified what was already happening, but nobody talking about it. Already happening, but nobody talking about it. 
What they go on to say is, we know that black populations are particularly underserved when it comes to mental health services and addiction services, he added. And there's less economic, clinical, social resilience to be able to push back against some of these drugs coming into the community. Let me just let me just jump off there and in parenthetically insert myself into the Harvard's discussion. OK, because that is truly something that has um, the burr that has gotten in my saddle <clears throat> in terms of resources, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we tell people to get help but the resources are not there. Or if they are, it's, it's a, a year of Sundays trying to get access to them. We've, we've got diminished resources. We've got the, the, diminished people being able to give the resource. And we wonder why nobody can get help. Why is that? You always say, go get help. And you can't even, you can't even talk to a, a, a counselor. It, it take, you got to make a six month appointment. The CDC proposed an updated guidance with regard to how doctors prescribe opioids for people with chronic pain. Imagine that. And cities across the U.S. have sought some innovative approaches to combat the epidemic. Chicago's health department partnered with the city's public library to make Narcon a potentially life-saving overdose reversal drug available in areas most effective, most affected. City officials in San Francisco's hard-hit Tenderloin district announced that emergency, they announced an emergency declaration in December, allowing them to open a community health center where drug users can access mental health resources, housing, and other basic needs. Black New Yorkers had the highest rate of overdose deaths of any racial or ethnic group in 2020. According to the city's Department of Health and their database, the Bronx led in fatalities based on borough, followed by Staten Island. Last November, New York became the first U.S. city to open authorized injection sites for drug users to move a move that in January had helped avert over 100 overdose deaths. So because we, we just don't have a lot of services, we have to open up sites to at least let people use safely. Fentanyl, ladies and gentlemen, is a killer. And what I'm asking you to do tonight, what I'm asking you to do, please, is sit down and just have a discussion with your ch children about how fentanyl and how drugs in general, it's not just about experimenting. Uh, we're seeing it uh, kill people. We're seeing it send people to their grave after just a mere experiment, after just a mere test, you know? And, and you know, you, you think, well, you know, it's just, it's drugs, that drugs are always going to be there. You know, Lord, they used to sell cocaine over the counter. Well, you know what? Drug overdose, uh, this epidemic in the United States, now primarily driven by synthetic opioids um, and, like I said, the ultra-deadly fentanyl, cost this nation roughly $1 trillion a year, according to a new bipartisan congressional report released in February of 2022. Listen, when I bring some, when we bring something to the impact in life 24 seven, we're not bringing it just for in the entertainment value. We're bringing it for the impact value. Sit down with your children and discuss with them the catastrophic effects of drug use. In particular, that these thugs and idiots are out here lacing drugs that were are for experimental purposes for young people they're lacing them with fentanyl which is 50 times more potent than it's 50 times more potent than what was the drug i said i have my notes it's 100 times more potent than morphine that's what it was 100 times more potent than morphine 
and 50 times more potent than heroin. Fentanyl. Sit down with your children and have a discussion. Well, if they don't know about it, I don't want to, I don't want to open up a there are conversations we need to have with their with our kids that need to be conversations that we have with them. Right? I'll make this commitment to you. I'll make this commitment to you, ladies and gentlemen, that because of this new data, I make the commitment. I I I commit to doing what I'm asking you to do. Tomorrow night. After baseball practice, me and Jeremiah will sit down over a bowl of spaghetti or whatever we got to eat and discuss the dangers of opioids. I'll do it. I'm not just going to tell you to do it. I'll do it. But I need you to join with me. Join with me in having a conversation with your kids about how deadly this stuff is. It cost our nation, ladies and gentlemen, $1 $1 trillion a year, whether that's measured in lives or dollars, the United States drug overdose epidemic should shock everyone. And it's unacceptable. And what do we do? We continue to kick the can down the road. What do we do? We continue to kick the can down the road. Well, yeah, we know it's a problem. Kind of like the foster, foster care epidemic I brought up to you all, you guys, a couple months ago about how how foster kids who are kids who are in foster care are being placed in psychiatric facilities because they ain't got no foster homes for them. And we just say, well, that's just, that's a problem. Yes, it is. It's quite unfortunate. It's more than unfortunate, ladies and gentlemen. It's an issue that cost our nation $1 trillion a year and countless lives in the emergency room, lives as young as 14 years old, kids overdosing because they're drugs that they thought they were going to experiment with. They didn't realize were laced with fentanyl, which I already told you is 100 times more powerful than morphine and 50 times more, more powerful than heroin. And we're just like, mm, let's pray for them. Sit down with your children. Sit down with your youth group. Sit down with any young person that you have influence with and have a conversation with them. We do not need to leave, lose one more kid. It starts at home. I said the five pillars that Greg and I have been circumnavigating the globe to impact, the home, the school, the community, the faith-based organizations, and the individual child. Greg, it's nasty. You, you're there, you're there at, at the place of a law in Craven County. And I'm sure they come rolling through there. It's in the community. Drug, drug dealers are finding a way to get our kids m- more addicted quicker. So the addiction factor is, is, is far greater. You know, a, a kid that's just going to try a little, a little experimental drug winds up getting getting hooked to something that the next time they experiment with it, it will kill them. I know this from personal experience. We know it, Greg. You know, on the Crystal Coast, just an hour away from here, fentanyl epidemic, kids experiencing exposure to to fentanyl-laced drugs. And this review that they did, this congressional review, um, said one thing that I just said again. This review said that there needs to be an emphasis, a comprehensive review into the opioid crisis. We know already we've given it a title of what it is. We say it's a crisis. We also say that we need to improve mental health services and expand healthcare access for those suffering from addiction, but we haven't. It's harder now to get healthcare services and mental health services than it's ever been. I'm just going. I'm just going to talk to you plain. We can clap. We can shout. We can throw oil on each other in church. But these are real issues. Kids are really dying. Fourteen-year-olds are coming to the emergency room 
unresponsive. We can we can run around the church and declare seven times victory and build our big buildings and our beautiful spiraling steeples and all of that. But the reality is, is that we got a undercurrent of pandemic. And it's not just about a mass pandemic. It's about a life pandemic where young people are everybody goes out and experiments, whether whether you want them to or not. That's why it's important that we discuss it. Am, am, am I talking to you or, or, or am I just on a tangent? Because let me tell you something. If it was your kid that you could prevent, if it was your child, you could save. I bet you you'd have the conversation. The White House Council of Economics Advisors assessment pegged the cost of opioid crisis at $700 billion three years ago. Gray, three years ago, it was a $700 billion crisis. Three years later, <laughs> it's a trillion dollar crisis. And we're just like, okay, well, I guess it's just like the gas going up. We'll just, we'll just adjust our travels. And that that's, listen, as the impact motivator, ladies and gentlemen, my job is not always to, to, to feed you soothing words that lull you to sleep. My job is to shake you sometimes. My job is to provoke you sometimes. Even my job is to make you angry sometimes if it means you will act. Trillion, Greg, one trillion dollars, this crisis is costing our country. And I've made a commitment, and I'm challenging you to make a commitment. You got a young child, or even a, a later child, <laughs> an older child, sit down with them and have this conversation. All you gotta do is go look up fentanyl youth drug overdose crisis. Google. And you will see that these numbers are continuing to rise. And we're continuing to see lip service applied to it. Drug overdose deaths have more than doubled in recent years. See, I, this this is just this is just what gets me. From about forty four thousand in twenty thirteen to more than a hundred thousand between May twenty twenty and April twenty twenty one, overdose incidents are responsible for more deaths in the U.S. each year than firearms, suicide, homicide, or car crashes. All according to the report. I'm talking to you tonight about the drug epidemic that is ravaging our young people. Three years ago, it cost our country $700 billion, the opioid crisis. See, we've given it a nice fancy title. It's the opioid crisis. So that way we can funnel more government money to it and not do a thing about it. <clears throat> You know, I, I, I get I see these reports about money that's being sent to this. I told you that happened with what happened right here in our very own state of North Carolina. They said we we allocated millions of dollars to to um, to mitigate the crisis in the foster care system. We sent millions of dollars years ago so that foster kids who just happened to get taken away from their homes because of abusive situations, those foster kids. Uh, are being put in psychiatric facilities because we don't have the funding. Wait a minute. You don't have the funding. You showed in, you showed in your report that money was, was sent. What did you do with it? Well, we had to use it and it was allocated. We will now commit to reallocating those funds. This, see, this is what I'm saying. This is a joke. It's all cool until it's your child. So you can't depend on the government to really have the conversation with your, with your babies. It starts at home. And I'm, and I'm imploring my listeners, those of you that, that got mad at me, pray through. Cause I'm gonna be back here tomorrow night, <laughs> but it, it's costing us not just tr a trillion dollars in, in economics. It's costing us lives. And I've seen firsthand 
the anguish and the heartache of two brokenhearted parents who had to bury their child because of this very epidemic. I seen it firsthand. I was in the room as this beautiful, handsome, promising young man was being eulogized because some idiot decided they wanted to lace the drugs that were merely experimental and cause them to be catastrophic. Fentanyl, ladies and gentlemen, is 100 times more potent than fentanyl is 100 times more potent and 50 times more potent than heroin, 100 times more potent than morphine. And drug dealers are lacing it on drugs of experimentation to, in, to save money, to increase addiction. And what they said about fentanyl, the challenge with fentanyl is it's a little different than weed, okay? It's, it's a little different than the dude on the, on the corner store at Rudy's Corner Store. Right, Greg said it best. Touching it can kill you. It's a little different, Nisi, than, than on, the, on Rudy's Corner Store way back in 1987 with some dude standing out there, his cap on backwards and Timberlands, trying to off, offload a few ounces of weed. It's a little different than that where the, the participant is doing it for recreational and experimentation purposes. The same motivation can be said that a young person is just trying to experiment. But these evil, seductive drug dealers are incorporating fentanyl, which can kill the first time. When it comes to understanding the demand for synthetic opioids, the report author says, authorities are largely flying blind. The United States does not have the data infrastructure to adequately measure the amount of illegally manufactured synthetic opioids consumed in the United States or the number of people who use them, the report says. Tracking fentanyl is difficult, especially when it comes mixed with other substances to include counterfeit pills, which users might not know are fake. A series of targeted raids across, done across the U.S. last year as a part of a new crackdown on counterfeit prescription medication resulted in the seizure of 1.8 million fake pills. 1.8 million fake pills. And authorities saw an increase in, in that number of those fake pills containing fentanyl, according to the Drug Enforcement Administration. The number of fentanyl-laced pills seized during the enforcement push at that time was enough to kill 700,000 people. Y'all good now? Y'all understanding what I'm, what I'm doing? If I'm going to bring a topic to you on this platform, if we're going to bring you a topic to you, it's going to be a topic of impact. I could sit here and say, well, I only got one kid left in the house. He's 17. He just about grown. No, because you know what? He can, he, he can, he can, um, he can be tempted just like, just like any other kid can. So I'm asking you to do tonight, moms and dads. I'm asking that if you have a young, if you have a child still in school, sit down with them and talk to them about the, the dangers of opioid use, addiction, and the death sentence that can be measured out by fentanyl. It starts at home, and home makes all the difference. Okay? And that's why we have this show, guys. This is exactly why we have this show. Um, because it is... Um, it's about impacting lives, man. And I know that sometimes it, it is not necessarily always easy to digest. I understand that sometimes it's not always 
topics that make us feel good. But here's what I here's what I want you to understand. You're right, Nisi. I said there's five pillars. And if the first pillar is 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 messed up, Nisi says it's hard teaching them when parents these days are strung out too. She's so right. The five pillars that we focus on at Impact Your Life 24-7, our corporate pillars are the home, the school, the community, the faith-based, and the individual child. I don't want to lose another kid, though. So for those of you who are not strung out, <laughs> and even if you are, and you're listening to this broadcast, I'm going to pray for you that God will touch you and deliver you from that junk. Because let me tell you, I was on opioids, like I said, for six years straight, and it was legal. And it was because something actually happened to me. But so many people go from being legally prescribed opioids to being like what Nisi said, strung out. And they can't get off of it. They can't. So, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> that concludes... Um, Another episode of Impact Life 24-7. We're going to close. We're going to close out the show tonight with a word from our sponsors. As you guys know, you know, when we when we do this show, our sponsors are really what make the difference for us. And so I want to I opened up the show with the sponsors. We're going to close with the sponsors. We're asking you to think about becoming a sponsor. We're going to do a sponsorship drive the end of March throughout April. We're just listen, the show is continuing to grow. The infrastructure that we have the staffing, the, the reach, the, the products, everything that we participate in. We're going to have a lot of giveaways uh, for those that do become sponsors, but helping us to propel this message. Listen, if I, if tonight, if Impacting Life 24-7 tonight causes one parent to sit down and talk with their kids, and then that kid decides they were going tomorrow to school tomorrow to get to get some pills they thought, from a drug dealer, they decide they don't do it. We don't get credit for saving that life, but we don't need credit. We just try to impact lives one day at a time. Thank you so much, guys. Our Impact in Life 24 seven sponsors are unique in that they help us to continue to impact one life, one day at a time. Our gold sponsors, Michelle Perry. She is the host of the Successful Diligence podcast and best-selling author of The Devil in My Shoe. You can connect with Michelle and get a copy of her book at SuccessfulDiligence.com. Paula Cousson has dedicated her life volunteering in community youth programs such as the Young Marines. Paula believes that the greatest asset each young person has is at least one caring adult in their life. Donald Lamb, he and his wife have been happily married for over 35 years. He is the proud father of one daughter and three sons. Donald honorably served his country for over 22 years in the United States Army and retired with distinction. Active in his community, Donald is the owner and operator of Mama's Boy Event Planning and Coordinating Services. Connect with Donald at facebook.com forward slash Mama's Boy Events Coordinating. Amanda Aker, coming from a past of drug abuse, homelessness, and being a convicted felon, Amanda has broken through and was able to let the good things into her life. Amanda is now on a mission to inspire and motivate people just like you. Amanda's core message is that our past does not define us and we are way stronger than we think. Connect with Amanda at facebook.com forward slash amanda.acre 2017. Our platinum sponsors, Mr. Gregory Smith. He is the author of 100 Simple Ways How to Manage a Property and Evidence Room. Get your copy by reaching out to Gregory Smith on Facebook or email him at smithg1963 at yahoo.com. Adrian Barker, she is the host of the Adrian Barker Speaks podcast, a life coach and CEO of Professional Global Etiquette. Please connect with her at professionalglobaletiquette.com. Mr. Mike Black from New Bern, North Carolina. Mike helps men throughout Eastern Carolina lead a faith-filled life. He is a compassionate leader in his church and a devoted husband and father. 
Dr. Nate Dunlap Jr. He is the executive director of the PRF Institute. He's the author of What's Next, Preparing for Eternity, and Don't Leave Me Like This, Inspiration to Leave a Legacy. As a 501c3 organization, the PRF Institute is blessed to be the premier stewardship-based teaching ministry that truly responds to the needs of others in the community. Contact him at prfinstitute.org. If you would like to become a sponsor of Impacting Life 24-7, it's very simple. Just visit clkingspeaker.com. That's right, ladies, just, just, ladies and gentlemen, just visit clkingspeaker.com. We'll see you back here tomorrow night for some more impact for our young people. We're going to focus a lot on that as we uh, continue to get ready to roll out this book. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you so much.